everyone welcome back to my channel and today on in the kitchen with sandy we're gonna be making a fantastic chicken recipe we're gonna be using some chicken breast some bacon some monterey jack cheese and a few other things it's gonna be absolutely amazing i don't really have a name for this um, i've made it many many times in the past and i just i don't know what to call it i don't know what to call it but i'll tell you what it is so good. You're really, really, really going to like this. And it's so easy to make. Um, it goes great with anything. You could make anything with it. But let's go over what we're going to be using. And I'm going to tell you what I'm making with mine today. All right. The the ingredients are um, very, very minimal. I've got some chicken breast here. Now, sometimes I like to, if they're really big chicken breast, I like to take them in, pound them out to make them thinner. But I think these are the perfect um, size for this recipe. We're also going to use some bacon here. Um, I've got some butter. We're going to use a couple tablespoons of butter, some Monterey Jack cheese. I'm going to shred this myself. A couple onions just because they're small. Um, I'm going to saute those and then we've got some green onions going on back there that we're going to use to go in our uh, leaf lettuce. We're going to do leaf lettuce, uh, wilted lettuce and onions and I've, I cheated. I cheated. I'll tell you in just a minute. Um, but we're also going to use some, this is onion powder, garlic powder, paprika, and a little bit of seasoned salt. And then I've got some pepper back there because I have not yet got pepper for my pepper mill. All right, I'm cheating today. Um, I'm making some refrigerated macaroni and cheese. It's like the Bob Evans macaroni and cheese. I've never had it, so we're going to try it. I didn't really want to, um, you know, throw together a homemade macaroni and cheese as well. But I do have an amazing recipe for homemade macaroni and cheese that's best you'll ever eat I promise you um, I'll leave a link to that macaroni and cheese recipe below and I will also leave a link to my wilted lettuce and onions did I show you my lettuce I don't think I showed you my lettuce I'll show you my lettuce but I'll leave a link to that as well it is going to be absolutely amazing I love this stuff so let's go ahead and get started all right this is my leaf lettuce that I've got this is what I like to use on my wilted um, lettuce and onions it's a southern thing it's definitely a southern thing but it's so good but I've already washed this and I'm just letting you know the water drip off of it all right the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get started chopping our green onions and our little yellow onions We are going to go ahead and get started frying the bacon up. I'm going to get my lettuce cut up for my wilted lettuce and onions and I'll probably shred the cheese. Now, growing up, mom and dad always used the lettuce out of the garden. They would grow leaf lettuce in the garden. And this is what she always made with it. It was so, so good. 
like I said, I've already got a recipe on here for um, wilted lettuce and onions, and I, I will definitely leave that um, below. But all it is is some bacon, a little bit of bacon grease, of course. Your lettuce. And some salt. It's probably not the healthiest of things, but I'm telling you what. It's definitely one of the most tastiest things you'll ever eat. I think it's a southern thing. And I like to leave my lettuce in nice bite-sized pieces. We don't cut it real small. We just kind of run our knife through it. All right, while we're waiting for the bacon to get nice and crispy, I'm just going to go ahead and mix my seasonings together, and then we're going to season our chicken. And this is um, about a half a teaspoon of each one of those. I like to use the paprika because it gives it a nice, beautiful, um, you know, color. So we're just going to season this on both sides. I'm not going to add any additional salt because, season this well guys, because I'm using the seasoned salt in here. Alright, now that I've got my bacon all fried up, I'm, I've drained the grease out of that that was rendered from the um, bacon, so I'm going to add a couple tablespoons of butter in here. And we're going to saute up our onions. We could probably use about half of that, so I'm going to use this other half for my chicken. I didn't really cut that many onions up. I've got this on about medium. We're going to toss our onions right in there. I'm going to add just a little bit of pepper to those. And I like to add, when I'm sauteing my onions, just a little tiny bit of onion salt. Just a little bit. And what really gives them a good flavor is if you add just a little bit of Worcestershire sauce to them. Just a little bit. Oh, they smell so good already. Now I'm going to just saute these up for um, about five or six minutes until they're nice and soft and translucent. And my oven's ready. Make sure that you go ahead and preheat your oven to 425 degrees. Oh, look how beautiful and golden those are. That's my dog sneezing. These are done enough for me. She rusted. Turn my pan off for just a minute. I'm going to go ahead and take these out. I tell you what, I should have got more than that. I'm just been standing here snacking away on these. Now, if you like yours a little bit more done or um, cook them a little bit longer, but they're going to cook for a few minutes in the oven as well on top of the chicken. I know I'm going to get some backlash for using this spoon. Now I'm going to turn this down just a little bit because my pan is nice and hot. And we're going to add that other little piece of butter. And once that's melted, ooh, that pan is hot. There we go. We're going to go ahead and saute our... We're not going to saute it. We're going to brown it on both sides. Where'd my tongs go? We're going to brown our chicken on both sides. I tell you, if you could smell what it smells like in my house right now.
And while that's doing its thing, we're going to go ahead and grate up some cheese. This is the Monterey Jack. I already cut me a piece off of it. I love this stuff. And this is going to go right over top of the chicken. I like to use, um, I like to shred this myself because it's, it just seems like it's a better cheese if you shred it. This is a soft cheese. Oh, look at that, guys. See the color of that? Get down in there. Oh, it's talking to me. Look at the color of that chicken. Isn't that beautiful? Look at that, how lovely that is. All right, that is browned enough. Now this whole pan is going to go in my 425 degree oven for about 15 minutes. Look at that chicken. It's been in the oven for 15 minutes at 425. So I went ahead and checked it. It's like right at 162, 163. And for safety reasons, you really want it at 165. So it's going to cook for a few more minutes. So it's going to be absolutely perfect. You do not want to overcook chicken breast. That's for sure. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to put some of these onions just right over top of them. These caramelized onions. Oh my gosh. Oh my word. And then I'm going to top them with the cheese that I grated. Look at that. Cheese is falling off into my pan. Man, over grated. That's all right, my dogs like it. Look at that. All right, these are going to go back in the oven. for about another five minutes until the cheese is nice and melted. Look at that chicken. Now we're just gonna add the, let me get down there where you can see that. It smells so good in here. We're gonna add some crumbled bacon. And I've got my bacon grease heating on the stove to go right over top of my wilted lettuce. And then we're going to top it with some green onions. Well, they're rolling off the pan. Rolling off the chicken. Look at that. Doesn't that look good? Now look at that. I didn't end up making the macaroni and cheese because she snarled her nose up at it. I guess because it's not homemade. Look at that. This, if you're doing low carb, this is perfect. I tell you, the struggle is real trying to get a bite of all of it. Mm. So good. So tender, so juicy. And I have by that wilted lettuce and onion. Mmm. Mmm. It's the star of the show. So good. I certainly hope 
bite my tongue. Certainly hope that you like this recipe. I hope you give it a try soon. Got a piece of lettuce on my tooth. If you have already submitted your um, recipes that you would like for me to air here on In the Kitchen with Sandy, make here on In the Kitchen with Sandy, I appreciate it. I'm already going through them. Um, if you'd like to submit a recipe that you would like for me to make here on my channel, just go ahead and send the recipe to in the kitchen with sandy at gmail.com. Tell me a little bit about yourself and why you like that recipe so well. You know I love you guys very much. I appreciate you. Make sure you give this a try soon. I'll see you on the next episode of In the Kitchen with Sandy. I'm going to take a bite. Bye-bye. Take care.